you made God and made God. Touch your neighbor and say, this, this thing made God mad. This thing made God mad. Instead of creating unity, instead of them being on one accord, speaking with one voice, following one vision, they cause division. There's nothing, there's nothing new under the sun. The same thing that went on in Jeremiah's day is the same thing that goes on in this day today. Politicians telling false lies that are speaking peace, and we know that there will never be peace because of the hearts of man. Evil lies in the hearts of man. You can't trust man. He'll say one thing and do another, and that's what's confusing to the body of Messiah. That's what confuses the people, the Christians, today. Because men and women who claim that they are Christians and that they are believers are telling lies and misleading God's people. Shoot down to Jeremiah 23, verse 25, real quick. It says, I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbor as their father forgot my name for Baal. In essence, the, the, the prophets are preaching and teaching words based on themselves, based on their dreams, and not based on God's word. That a person, even today, will build a whole message surrounded around their dream and not God's word. And so people believe, because they believe in the God in them, believe what they're saying to be true, but it may have been true, but only true for them. Right. Not for everyone. Right. And so it, it, it may be true to me, but it may be a lie for you. And if you believe the same thing for yourself, and God did not say it, and he's not in it, then it becomes a lie. Right. Verse 28 says, the prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. You can share your dream, but make sure you say it's a dream. <laughs> and he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully, yeah. with confidence. The difference between a dream and God's word. Yeah. Mm. And then he continues to write, what is the chaff to the wheat? says the Lord. There is a difference between the straw and the grain. There is a difference between the chaff and the wheat. Just like there's a difference between the dream and God's word. There's a difference between a lie and the truth. There are differences. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2, Paul writes to Timothy and says, preach the word. Being ready in season and out of season. Tell the people the truth, even when it's out of style, yeah. even when it's not fashionable. Yeah. Tell them the truth. He says, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. That means you got to take time to study in order to teach. Yeah. Don't speak from your own will. Don't speak from your own mind. Don't speak from your own visions and dreams. Use my word, God says. He says, take my word, learn my word, then teach my word. Hide my word in your heart so that you may not sin against me. No, God's people. And he continues to say, we're still in 2 Timothy chapter 4, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. That's right. And so people are following foolishness and nonsense that is trying to put people in bondage and take them back under, under the law. Yeah. When we're under grace, wouldn't you rather be under grace and know that someone else died for your sins who redeemed you? Those things were for, for that time and that culture. It's not for now. And some things that are for 
for now we're ignoring. And the Bible continues to say, we're still in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4, it says, And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to lies, to stories, to fables. Verse 5, But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. That each one of us has to do the work of the, this isn't just for the ordained and, and licensed ministers. That each one of us have an assignment to preach God's gospel. On a small scale, one-on-one, -on -one, or on a larger scale. The Bible tells us that the apostles, they went out, they preached the gospel, they healed the sick, and they cast out demons. And then the evangelists preached the word with fire and passion and compassion, which is love. Jesus says that is the law. Love. And whatever we do, we should do it out of love. So what holds us back? What holds us back from telling the truth? What holds us back? And back in Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23 should still be there. Hope you put your finger there. Verse 3. This is God speaking through Jeremiah. But I will gather the remnant of my flock. He says, y'all messed over. The leadership messed over my people. But here's what I'm going to do. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their foes. And they shall be fruitful and increase. I will set up shepherds, people, over my People, I will set those leaders who understand, who knows me, who spend time in my word and know my word and has hid the word in their hearts yes. over them who will feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed nor shall they lack or be lacking, says the Lord. Verse 5 says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. Uh-oh. God's vision, the revelation here. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now this is his name by which he will be called. Jehovah Tikanu, the Lord our righteousness. And then Jeremiah continues to write that this thing that will come in the future is going to make the Passover look like a small thing. That when you look back at Egypt, it will be so far away, and what God puts before God's people will be so huge that you can't help but be a part of it, or at least desire it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says, For he made him, meaning Jesus, who knew absolutely no sin, to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus is the righteous, he is the righteous king who will reign, who is currently reigning for those who have him dwelling within them. In essence, we become the righteousness of God in Christ, in Messiah, in Jesus. When we receive him, are you with me? We become the representatives of Yeshua, of Jesus, who dwells within us. How do we know? Jesus said so in John chapter 14. He says in verse 12, greater works you will do because I go to the Father. Are you with me? And he says, and whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That everything that you need, he will provide. There is no excuse. That you, there's no excuse for you not representing Jesus here on earth. There's no excuse for you not walking 
in the authority of his kingdom ship. There is no, there is no reason why you should be holding back from preaching God's word to those who are lost. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. Why? Because he says, I will give you everything that you're in need of so that the Father will be glorified by the way of the Son Amen. in you. Yeah. That whatever you're in need of in ministry, whatever you ask him for, God wants to get the glory out of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But verse 14 is the catch. He says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Not in Yoli's name, not in Clarence's name, not in Bojo's name, but in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. And then Jesus said, I, I, I believe he said it real tenderly, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, meaning that Jesus was the first helper. That he may abide with you forever. He is the spirit of truth. So there is no excuse for you telling lies. Because the spirit of truth dwells within you. Why? It took place in Acts chapter 2. For the body of Christ. For the body of Messiah. The spirit of God came down. The spirit of truth. So that we may teach the truth. Not according to our visions and dreams. But according to God's word. Why? Because there's no new revelation. What can you tell me that God has not already said in his word? And so God says, if you have dreams, tell people that they were your dreams. Not my words. If you have visions, tell them that it was your vision. Not my word. Unless the two align themselves. They match. Your vision match God's word. Stay with me. The greater works that Jesus mentioned in John chapter 14 come with three things. One, it comes with condition. Two, it comes with commission. And three, it comes with provision. Conditions are the revelation of God, God speaking. And God does, hear me out, he does speak to us in visions. He does speak to us in dreams. And he does speak to us audibly. But he speaks to us loud and clear in his word. We can't make any mistakes. We can't say, well, I think it was God speaking to me. I think God wants me to revelate this or share this with God's people. Then make no mistake. Rhema plus logos equals duramas. Speaking God's word equals power. I can speak every vision every dream all day long but when I began to speak God's word I gained power are you with me commission the second one our response personally and globally our personal response mind which is our intellect what we study the study of God's word our will, our behavior, we take God's word, we align it to our lives, and then we operate, we, we, we behave the way that God assigns us to behave. And then our emotion, why do we do what we do? We should first and foremost do it out of love, but not everybody do what we do out of love. We can do it out of compassion, we can do it out of greed, we can do it out of hatred. But our response, the commission, our response personally should align itself with God's word, just naturally. And then, and then the Bible says here in Proverbs 23 and 7, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That whenever, if I hide God's word in my heart, then I become God's word. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The manifestation of the revelation, what I study, what I open up and, and absorb in my mind becomes a part of me and I begin to act it out. 
And then the third thing is the provisions. Provision is what God does to ensure that his vision is being fulfilled. That if, if it is truly God's vision, he's going to provide for it. Many of you have seen that happen, just the manifestation just in last month. And some of you even this month saw the manifestation of God and his vision. He said it, and he provided for it. Are you with me? Yes, there were conditions, and yes, there were commissions, but he provides for his provision, or his vision. Are you with me? Provision, God provides before the vision what is needed for the vision. God has gifted us, and God has graced us for the vision. So I ask this question, what holds you back from fulfilling God's vision in your life? All the things that God has spoken to you, that you have written down in your journal, that you didn't tell half the folk, what's stopping you, what's holding you back from walking it out? In Psalms 39, verse 2, the Bible says, I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred up. Yeah. In essence, when we don't do what God has visioned us, what God has given us, especially in his word, and we know in this particular case, we're talking about preaching God's word, prophesying God's word, a manifestation of us opening our mouth, our pay, and sharing with God's people his word. That what holds us back, even the apostle Paul says, put on the whole armor of God. And then he turned around and said, but pray for me that I may have boldness. Right. Even though he had the whole armor of God, he says, when I open my mouth, my knees are shaking. So if that's holding you back, we can pray for you to open your mouth and speak the truth. Yes. Stay with me. Let's just look just for a moment at Jeremiah's life. It's very significant. Jeremiah was first a priest, and then he was anointed a prophet. <laughs> Jeremiah's life aligned itself with God's word. Even though many of us know that he was called at the age of five, but there were children who were raised in the temple. Mary was raised in the temple, and Samuel was raised in the temple, and Jeremiah was raised in the temple. He heard the voice of God at the age of five. <laughs> So he was called real young, and he stayed, he remained in the temple, and then God says, I need you to be a mouthpiece. I need you to speak. So he was a little, he was a little priest, just like Samuel, wearing a little ephah. And God says, I called you to be a prophet, not only to my people, but to the nations. He was called to uproot and tear down. He was called to plant and build up. He was called to pass judgment, and he was called to give hope. Israel had broken the covenant, the old covenant, and so he had to get them back in alignment. The Bible says that Jeremiah even begged the leaders to turn back to God. Please turn back to God. Trump, please turn back to God. Just calling out to the leaders, please turn back to God. And they did not. They refused because doing it their way is the best way for them, but not for God's people. He prophesied that Israel would be taken into exile by Babylon for 70 years, and it happened. He also prophesied that their broken hearts would be healed by God, and it happened. But the worst of it all, Jeremiah was persecuted. He was not only persecuted by people and leadership, but he was persecuted by his own family. And he got to the point where he wanted to quit. The Bible says, I am not even going to speak God's name again. I'm refusing this thing. I don't want to open my mouth. It hurts too much. People are not listening anyway. When I open my mouth, my children, they don't listen to me. When I open my mouth and I go to the community, people look at me cross-eyed. When I go to work, people are threatening to get me fired. When I open my mouth, people want to persecute me. Why in the world would I want to do this? When I say the name of Jesus, I make people mad. They're not mad at him, they're mad at me. Jeremiah said, but it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. If I don't open my mouth, I'll burst. 
and so and so. What is holding you back from doing what God has called you to do? What is holding you back from preaching God's word and prophesying his word? What is holding you back from giving God's word to somebody who's lost and cannot find a way? And tell them the truth, not what you think, but what you know based on the word of God. That's why it's so important for us to take his word and hide it into our heart. That means we got to meditate on it day and night till it's a part of our spirit man. That when we walk, we're splashing word. Are you with me? Hi, I'm Laura Amoson with Trinity Plus One Transportation, LLC. We are a state certified, bonded, licensed transportation provider for the cities of Hopewell, Petersburg, Colonia Heights, Chester, Richmond, and the counties of Prince George and Chesterfield County, Virginia. If you're tired of unknown arrival times of other transportation providers, contact us, Trinity Plus One Transportation. We transport to medical facilities, places of employment, day support centers, just to name a few. Schedule with us your ride. We provide door-to-door -door service let us be the one to transport you to your important destinations. Call us at 804-479-4007 or visit us and like us on Facebook at Trinity Plus One Transportation. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you again for joining us today. If you are in the Hopewell, Virginia area, we would like for you to join us at the Life Center every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and every Wednesday night for Bible study. SMI Life Center is located at 108 North 7th Avenue, Hopewell, Virginia, 23860. At the Life Center, we empower you to pursue life in Jesus Christ. The Life Center is a place to learn and grow. Hope to see you soon. God bless. Empowered Life with Dr. Yoli.